Hello? Where am I? Let me see if I can find a light or something. Hey. Where am I? Last thing I remember was going to call Jenny. I was walking into a phone booth. Next thing I know, I remember a, a big boom and I woke up in here. I'm in a bot. I'm in the phone booth, but it's surrounded by cement on all sides. Now that I think about it, I don't even remember who I am. Oh, oh, good. Oh, yeah, wait a second. That's right. I'm Dan Shaheen. And this is comic book news. Oh, man. I, uh, things got away from me for a second there. Because today I'm going to talk about one of my all-time favorite comics. And a comic you need to read, and I'll bet you haven't. That comic is Fleep by the amazing cartoonist Jason Shigo. We're going to look at a bunch of his works, but we're going to go in-depth on Fleep today on Comic Book News. Oh man, welcome back to Comic Book News. It, it, it's been a while. Been a lot going on in the comic book world as far as news. We've been doing a lot of live streaming, if you haven't noticed, with key industry insiders, luminaries of the comics industry, if you will. And well, it's time to get out of uh, Lois Lane mode or more maybe Vic Sage mode in my case and uh, back into reviewing some comics, right? We're in the middle of this lockdown. People are wanting to know comics to read. There's no new comics coming out. Well, what the heck, man? Why have I got 30 years worth of comics piled up back here if not to review some of the good stuff, some of the golden stuff, some of the stuff that I will bet you about maybe 80 to 90% of you watching have never heard of. Then again, you might surprise me because we have a discerning bunch watching this show. Today, we're gonna talk about Fleep by Jason Shiga. Man, Jason Shiga is a cartoonist like no other that I know of. Um, I, I The first book I ever read by him was Fleep. I think I might've picked it up at the Ape, the Alternative Press Expo way back I don't even rem remember what year. It might not have even been this century. It was probably very early turn of the century. Anyway, this guy has grown in reputation and skills and and and, um, and many other things and put out many other books. Let's take a quick look at some of the stuff that he's done. Like Shortly after, they did a book called Double Happiness. This is a book that's uh, kind of hard to find, kind of rare. Not many um, people know about this one from the Shiga catalog. But this one is a little more, feels a little somewhat autobiogra autobiographical, really about the Chinese American experience, double happiness being sort of a, um, um, a, a, a popular Chinese expression. And they talk about it in the book and it's weird and dark and has a dark twisted side to it that, um, that I love, like all of Shiga's books, as you're gonna find out. Okay, another one of his great books that I sold a ton of when I owned a comic book store, was Book Hunter. Okay, this is all about a like forensic library detective who searches down the uh, uh, people who do crimes in the business of rare books. It takes itself super seriously and goes into ultra nerdy detail on library science and book binding, and also like the like caper crimes and action movies, and it's it's it's. Uh, hard-boiled, two-fisted, gun-toting action throughout, uh, and library science as you like it. Meanwhile, Shiga got noticed, right? And he got picked up by uh, major publishers, and he put, this was the first thing he put out. He put out this kid's book. Now, he had put this out in sort of mini-comics format, and this is a kid's book or a book unlike any other, it's a choose-your-own-adventure format, something that Shiga um, sort of pioneered in comics, certainly in this methodology. I'm going to give you a peek at this. And now that I think about it, we got to go back and do an entire episode, maybe just about Meanwhile. But we'll talk today about some of the weird interactive comics that Shiga has done. He did them as experiments that he sold at conventions, and I picked them up over the years. And those evolved into um, um, more formal books. Empire State, a love story, um, a really uh, beautiful little book. It was, I think, his follow-up to um, Meanwhile from uh, Abrams Comic Arts, right? This is like a highbrow comics publisher. 
These are like the guys that are going to publish dudes like Chris Ware or, um, I don't know, you know, art comics, uh, 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 Dan Klaus type stuff. I don't think they actually um, publish them. Or maybe Abrams has done some cost stuff. I, I, I might be getting that mixed up. Anyway, it's a highbrow, like, regular publishing company that, like, they wanted the top-notch intellectual comics or whatever. They went for Shiga. <clears throat> okay, next, Demon. Shiga put this out on his own, I believe, originally, right? I He had a Patreon account, and I got a Patreon, and I got mailed a mini-comic every two months, I think? Hand drawn and stapled. I've got them here, and I'm going to show you. And I've got the the deluxe slip cover that came from being a, a early adopter Patreon um, patron on Patreon rather. And since this has come out in graphic novel format, you can pick these up. Three graphic novels, and I'll bet you they're collected in an omnibus or something. Um, really, his craziest out there action comic ever. Uh, in a nutshell, a demon in Shiga's story is. Is it's it's a weird thing, right? So if you, it's someone who is functionally immortal, and if he dies, whoever he is closest to, he will sort of possess them and become in possession of that person. And then when that, if that body dies, whoever he is closest to, sort of he inhabits their body and takes over from there. A, a kind of simple concept, but man, taken to the nth degree and level by Shiga's craziness, you get into some really weird, bizarre scenarios. It's a giant, sprawling, action-packed adventure full of twists and turns and violence, ultra-violence, um, and crazy stuff. Shiga's like this combination of like a math nerd. He loves math and puzzles and stuff, but he also is a huge fan of like Die Hard and... And, and action movies, and he tr really hit a sweet spot and brought them together here on Demon. But we're not going to talk about Demon. We're going to talk about Fleep. But frankly, I think we've done enough talking. It's time to do a little bit of looking. And where do we do our looking on this show? I forget. It's been so long since I've done a comics review. Where do we do it? Oh, yeah, that's right. In the all-new, all-different, all-money, million-dollar comics cam. Oh, brother, how about that for special effects and production values? Million dollar comics cam, uh, never looked better. We're going to talk about Fleet, but first uh, let's talk. Let's look at some of those other books. And, and one more that I didn't mention um, is, is this, Knock Knock. I mentioned some of the interactive experimental comics that uh, Shiga worked on over the years and sold uh, at conventions. This one I know I bought at Ape. And this was like his early, early attempts um, at a, a choose your own adventure comic, right? Where you had multiple outcomes that could happen um, depending on how, on how you read the comic, right? It's a really uh, fascinating idea that he took, eventually took to the next level I wish I had another book of his. I thought I had grabbed it. It's a book called Hello World that actually allowed you to have... It was sort of choose your own adventure, but it had two parts to it and it let you store your inventory like a game, but in a paper book form. Really crazy stuff. But let's look at Meanwhile first. Well, you know, these other ones, these are great graphic novels. I, I don't want to give them the short shrift. I'm not going to go through all of the book, Shiga books, but man, seek out Book Hunter. Seek out Empire State. You might not be able to find Double Happiness. Look for the secret messages that are that are built in to the end pages. Let me see if I can find it here. Um, I, I can't right now, but I'll, I'll look for it. Anyway, we're not talking about this book. I'll come back and review this book and show you all the secrets of it. Book Hunter. Again, we're not going to review, but look at the, the, the art. You know, Shiga's style is super, super simple. It's not informed by a Western comics very much. I, it, he cites as his biggest influence, I believe it's a Filipino cartoonist named Lat. Who, who, he did a book called Kampung Boy, I, I, I think, recently. There might be others, but like he's got this style that's um, it's all his own. It's instantaneously recognizable. It's simple, yet... Um, complex like he's using draftsmanship and 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 skills and and 
to make it look this simple, but to portray complicated things, the guy's super talented. I love it. But now meanwhile, right? And this is where it gets to the next level for interactive comics. This is a kid's book. And it is interactive, right? Stop. This is not an ordinary comic. Okay? And meanwhile, you make the choices that determine how the story unfolds. Instead of one story, meanwhile splits off into thousands of different adventures. Most will end in doom and disaster. Only one path will lead you to happiness and success. To read meanwhile, remember that each panel is connected to the next by a thin tube. Okay, so let's, let me just, it's, it's easier to show you. Why do we have a million dollar comics cam if not to show, not tell? Right, so here's the first page and our first choice comes here. Uh, little Jimmy goes to the ice cream store and we follow the tubes and he says, okay, I'm ready to order now. Yeah, and we get to our first split. Do we want chocolate or vanilla? Okay, simple enough. If we pick vanilla, we follow the tube here to this tab, which lets us pick up the book, the open up the book to, you know, past many, many pages to this tab where we can then follow the tubes again, right? Until we get to uh, other choices, right? This is weird. This is complicated. This is not for your uh, a really young kid unless they're super smart. And even if you're a 12, 13 year old kid or something, you gotta be pretty brainy um, to make it happen. Pick any path, 3,856 story possibilities. Dude, this thing includes time travel where you go back in time through the panels to pages you've already been on and sort of observe the other panels and other things that are so crazy. I'm not going to go into it right now. Really hard to review. What about Fleep, right? Well, wait, one more. Demon. I got to talk about this because I bought... I was part of the Patreon campaign. And so every month I would get this envelope with a new mini comic from Shiga. These are just a wonderful thing to hold in your hand. You're not going to find them this way. He used a really interesting printing technique, I think called Risograph. I may be wrong. To get this sort of like, you look at it and it's like, oh, this colors and stuff. They're kind of like off register almost and a little weird and a little funky. Dude, that's all by design. Like he went through crazy process steps to get there. Um, and he put this thing out on a schedule over a long period of time. Put out all these issues and I picked it up and I'm, man, I'm really glad I did. Like I said, you could get the three graphic novels and I thought about getting them, but I'm like, why would I when I have them in this beautiful package that shipped with a flat packed handmade slip cover that you put together to put all your stuff in. This is, mwah, this is Shiga, folks. Okay, let's get into Fleep, though, because this is what we're here to talk about. I could talk Shiga all day. Guys, these are the kind of comics that I love the most. I know I review a lot of X-Men, and I review a lot of mainstream superhero comics, and I do love those. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to say one type of comic is better than the other, but I'm going to say this type of comic is better than almost any other. Right? This is a cartoonist. I, Shiga, not to say this means a ton, but like after Demon, she won this grant to go to France and work for like a year. The, the nation of France paid for his apartment and childcare and food and everything and had no other restrictions to just work on comics. Whatever you want to do. And he worked on his ultimate choose your own adventure comic called The Box and it's going to be coming out. I don't know when. We'll find out. I'm, I've been trying to reach out to Shiga. The guy's kind of hard to get a hold of. Maybe I'll tweet, tweet him or something. But anyway, let's talk about Fleet. Okay, so like I like I alluded to in my little cinematic intro, uh, the book starts out with you know young Jimmy waking up in a phone book or young whoever. He doesn't remember who he is. The last thing he remembers, he was going to tell Jenny. He was going to give Jenny a call and tell her he was running late. Okay, and so now the rest is sort of a mystery. It's like a locked room puzzle escape room type scenario because he's in here and he's got only a few things right he's got there, there's this phone and it, it's got a dial tone and he's got a couple of coins he's got a note written in his own handwriting but in a language he doesn't know how to speak and he has it, it looks like russian and he has a dictionary to tran that translates between symbionese and russian but he doesn't speak either of those languages so he has to figure out like 
you know, he's trapped in concrete and it seems seamless, seems like he's only got so much air. So he wants to figure out how much time he's got to, to figure out how to escape before he might suffocate. So he takes some paper, creates a paper box to measure and breathes in and out of it until he gets dizzy, until he figures out, based on that, how many cubic spans of air are in that room and how long, based on how long it took him to get dizzy, he calculates that he's got uh, um, only so much time. He says he'll, uh, I can recycle up to 17 times. That leaves me roughly 56 hours before I suffocate. Too bad I'll pass out from dehydration in 48 hours. Anyway, he looks at what he's got in the room and he's got this. Two ballpoint pens, 20 feet of dental floss, unwaxed, a digital wristwatch, a Russian paperback, three coins of unknown currency, and a handwritten note. It's not much to work with, but these are the tools for much I must fashion my escape, okay? And this is just where it starts to go even even better. If you like math and you like geeky, sciencey stuff, then you like, you're going to like Jason Shiga's comics and you're going to like Fleet. Uh... You know, one of the first things he does is uses a, a coin as a screwdriver to unscrew the light fixture cover, which he says, now I have a bowl to do my business in, right? And, and so he's trying to figure out what he can do with all these things. And then he goes through, this is, this is what sold me on this book. He goes through this calculation. He says, uh, he pees in this bowl, right? And he's got a straw and he says, should I drink it? If it means another eight hours of life, but is it worth it? Well, the rescue teams might reach me within those eight hours, which would mean 40 more years of life. So yes, it is worth it. Even figuring for a one in 100 chance of rescue within those eight hours, each sip I take will add on average two months to my precious life. And then this, you think, you look, you slurp. I love, this is cartooning. To me, this is as good as, as it can get with a brainy concept, super well thought out, an appealing style of art and a, and a character, and, and just a crazy mystery that, uh, that we have to unfold. And it just gets crazier and crazier from there. He's able to use the dental floss and the thing as a pendulum to measure using the Coriolis force uh, calculations. He's able to roughly calculate his latitude and longitude and starts to piece together where he is and how he might have got there and what's happened. Meanwhile, there's other explosions happening and crazy things happening that start to unfold. So many different calculations about how long it'll take to chisel through to get more air and how much longer that'll let him live and what he can do. And it's all just one of those sort of like super nerdy, what if you're trapped in this box scenarios. And, and, and that's my cup of tea. Guys, if you're looking for Batman and punching, it's not going to be in a Shiga book. Well, I, I take that back. There's plenty of shit punching in, in plenty of Shiga books. but And plenty of action too. Just not in Fleep, I guess. Fleep, all the action occurs in the mind and in these calculations that, that, that Jimmy has to make. I don't want to give anything away. I'm definitely not going to tell anything more. I, I'm just going to say that Jimmy makes some startling conclusions by the end of this that both condemn him and redeem him. He did bad things, maybe, but maybe for good reasons, and is able to redeem himself finally with an ultimate act of redemption in the end. And uh, this is a beautiful comic. This is Fleet by Jason Shiga. Guys, this is my kind of book. I mean, when I first started this channel, I envisioned reviewing stuff like this all the time, right? Like, this is my bread and butter. I love alternative and indie comics. And... I sort of fell into the rut of new weekly comics and again, I'd been out of them for a while but I got back in because, you know, it's new stuff, stuff people are searching for on YouTube and I love it. So, but right now we got a halt. We got a break in that. It's made me go back and examine my original purposes for this channel, which were news about the comics industry and comic book world and reviewing interesting, great comics that everybody loves. And I'm sorry, X-Men, you ain't it, with a couple of exceptions. So I dedicate, I'm going to go back more and there's going to be a lot more live streaming and industry news and there's going to be a lot more reviewing weird, old, obscure and uh, favorite comics of mine. I hope that's okay. The ratings will tell.
Speak of the ratings, guys, we've got a lot of new people watching this channel. A lot of you came over for some other live stream action I was doing on some other channels. I welcome everybody here. Uh, I've got a great comment section. I encourage you to comment in the comments. Please keep it clean, keep it civil, or I'm going to nuke you. I'm going to pull you out of here, but honestly, you can express your opinions if you don't like what I'm saying or how I'm saying it. You tell me. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Give me a thumbs down if you don't, but leave a comment and let me know. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned. We're going to have some amazing content in the upcoming week. I've got some interviews lined up. I don't want to jinx it by saying who, but basically we're talking about um, some people from the top, top echelons of the comic book industry. And uh, I hope that you'll watch and keep watching and I hope you enjoy this content and I'll see you next time.